Pittsburgh, and today we're going to be talking about my being a drag queen and the other aspects of my awesome life. Will agreed to tell me about his life, some of the challenges he's faced, and to talk about some of the people that have seen him transform over the last few years into who he is today. Uh, I grew up in a no-name, small-ass town called Houston Town. <sighs> Shit, it's like... Um an hour, like two hours away from Harrisburg. I mean, when I was little, you know, I had fun, but as I got older, it got really boring really fast. Um, and I began realizing things about myself, my sexuality. And back then I was religious, you know, as opposed to now where I don't believe in anything. Will's mum would only agree to appear in this documentary if I didn't show her face on film. She has seen an enormous change in her son. I have heard him witness to others about Jesus up until he was late teens. And then things started to, um, I don't know what word to use, he, he started um, thinking that differently. He didn't want to feel the way he started to feel. I know that he became mad at God and a lot of people do about different things. Will's hometown has almost more churches than people. I asked him to characterize his mother's beliefs. Yeah, a right-wing fundamentalist and uh, believes that you know marriage should be between a man and a woman. I was raised, you know, um, with the Bible. It's something that I really, really lean into now because I realize that um, that's a basic thing in life. If, if I didn't have God, where would the hope be? Will's mum needs hope now more than ever because Will has just been diagnosed with HIV. See, I found out as recently as January 31st. And I don't really care if people think I'm crazy or not. I, I knew it was going to happen. And when he told me, it was not a shock. Back in high school, before coming out, Will had a girlfriend. Her name was Allie, and they remained the best of friends. When Will found out he had HIV, Ali was one of the first people that he contacted. He told me that day, well, I was at work and he sent me a text and all it said was, I need to talk to you. And I, I knew just from that, like, it was something serious. Whenever I called him, he just, he seemed not himself at all. And he described it to me, he's like, well, every month they go to this place and they test me for stuff. And they're always like, oh, you're fine. You don't have anything. And then I got a call today and he's like, I already knew something was wrong because they don't call you unless something is wrong. The day before we found out, I asked him this question. I was like, would you ever be with an HIV positive person? And he said, no, hell no, not in a million years. I couldn't do it. And the next day, he calls me up and he's like, you know that conversation we were having? And he, started, he, he says, I'm positive. And I'm like, oh, okay. The day that, he, that I told him about my HIV status, he not only took off from work, early, you know, due to family emergency, but, you know, he came to my side and he told me that, you know, leaving me didn't even cross his mind. Uh, he told me that quite a few, a few of his friends said that, that they would have left me if they were in his shoes, and thankfully they're not in his shoes, because I don't know what I would have done if, you know, he would have left. The fact that Matt stayed is even more remarkable because at that stage, they'd only been dating for about a month. We met online. The real, the official story is always we met at Starbucks, but that's not true. We met on Adam for Adam. It's a gay website. It's a hookup website. We wanted to meet and we met at Starbucks and we had a good conversation and I was like, whoa, this kid's not crazy and not incredibly flaming. And he came back here and then we watched a movie and he was like, hey, let's get naked. I was like, what the hell? Matt knew that Will did drag, and he'd seen photos of Will dressed as Wilma, but he'd never met Wilma in the flesh until recently. I asked him what it was like meeting her. It confused me, and it kind of reaffirmed my, my 
homo flexibility because I was actually turned on by it. <laughs> by him as a woman, like knowing that he had a penis, but also that he looks remarkably like a woman. Like it's scary because he doesn't have particularly feminine features. Like you can see some drag queens and like, oh yeah, they're a drag queen. But he looks like a woman. You put the wig on, you put the makeup on, you're like, oh my God, it's a woman who happens to be my boyfriend, so I don't know if I'm, what's going on here. But I was so amazed. I'm like, he's gonna transform the Pittsburgh drag scene. A drag queen is usually a man who dresses and acts like a character woman, often exaggerating characteristics for comic, dramatic, or satirical effect. There is often a performance or entertainment aspect to the dressing up. Although many drag queens are presumed to be gay men, there are drag artists of all genders and sexualities who do drag for various reasons. Stop my education, bitch! Because Ali had known Will for such a long time, she got to see his full transformation, from quiet country kid to Wilma. His first thing he really got into was uh, bondage and leather. He had a lot of like, collars, chains. The next thing I remember is he was getting into more of the, the latex and the rubber and the real tight, tight stuff. And um, soon after that, he was getting into drag. And he, he was like, Allison, I need your help. We need to go to the mall and we need to find a dress. And so we did. We went to, I think it was Deb, and we were looking through prom dresses. And um, we were picking them out. And, the ones we were picking off the shelf were obviously too small to fit me. So, <laughs> and then he was the he went and tried them on in the store. <laughs> I think it's great. Like I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I don't want to date a drag queen because I like my men to be men. It's like, fuck, feminine guys, drag queens, they have bigger balls than us more masculine gay guys because they have to put on makeup, they have to be that. I, I'm so proud of him, doing what he loves to do. I mean, how many of us get to do what we love to do? Let's see, Matt, Will, and Wilma, the future for them, longer term? I would like to have at least one child. I have this thing called Kleinfelters, and it's a genetic disorder. It basically means I can't have children. And Will has this like hope that I will be able to father a child. And I don't want to tell him that it's not true. It's just, it can't happen. It, I mean, it, it won't happen. So the fact that Will, there's like technologies that they can like take the HIV off his sperm and that, that excites me because I'm like, hey, like we don't have to adopt, even though I want to adopt. He called me a few weeks ago and he said, when the time comes and Matt and I decide to have children, will you be the surrogate? Will you?" actually have the child for us and then right after that he gets into but don't worry about me you no know, the HIV you know they can get rid, you know they cleanse the, everything there that they, they can get rid of that I'm like and I agreed to it I'm like sure you know I would be more than happy to I didn't even have to think about it I was like you know what you're one of my closest friends we've been through a lot and whenever that time's whenever that time comes I would be more than happy to do that for you Will continues to get regular tests to monitor his health. At completion of this documentary, he was still healthy enough to not have to take antiviral medication. Matt got tested during the filming of this documentary. He is HIV negative. Will's mum still struggles to understand her son. Ali and Will remain close friends. And Wilma? Wilma remains active in the local drag scene. Her next expected appearance will be at Will's birthday.